What's going on, folks? Today, we're going to fix an M18 happens drive impact that doesn't work, but the technology on the 3.8 is going to be the same. And don't worry, folks, you can't break what's already broken. Okay, so I had this old half-inch M18 here, and if anybody knows anything about these, these things are at least $200. Really expensive, wouldn't work. I'd press the trigger, and you could hear it kind of like kunk, 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 kunk. Well, I don't know nothing about fixing these. I just took this one apart because I figured you can't break what's already broken. So I took it apart and I was very gentle. I did not take this apart, although eventually I did end up separating it before I figured out what the problem was. I took all of my screws out and I set them down corresponding to where they go inside the holes. I had it laid like this, which allowed me to remove the top. And I did solve the problem. I took it apart, I looked at it, even though it really just boiled down to the only reason that it was clicking was because this didn't move anymore. This had gotten jammed back inside here, which pressed into the casing, and obviously there's a bearing inside there or it wouldn't spin so free on the back side of there. I didn't need to separate it, I just grabbed a pair of pliers and spun it. What you could do is you could just take out these four screws pull this back out of here. And it's gonna pull out hard because these are all magnets inside here. And as long as this spins, you won't have the same problem as me. Get to spin like this or get one of these new parts here. So what I did was I laid it on its side just like this and it is necessary to lay it this correct orientation. Screws right here and I kind of laid them out in the orientation of the holes because they are different sizes and stuff like that. First I removed all of these, then I removed these four screws that hold our anvil on here. Now what happened was when mine stopped working, it got pressed in between two spaces and it locked this down to where it wouldn't spin. So really all I needed to do was remove the four screws back here, get this to spin. In case you have to remove it for a different reason, and I don't know, I'm not a repair technician on these. Once you take all the screws out of there, you're gonna gently wiggle it apart. And don't worry, nothing's gonna come flying out at you. I just spent some time looking inside there, looking for melted parts, broken parts. Some stuff looked melted, but it really wasn't. It was just that it was the back of that that didn't work. But what are you going to do if you take this thing apart and you don't see any problems with it? Look at it closely. I did spend about 20 minutes looking at it on the inside, looking over everything, disassembling as little as possible to solve this problem. And the last thing that I figured out was my actual problem. So it paid to take it apart and look at it. Think about it this way. If you take this apart and it takes you 20, 30 minutes to look at it, how much money did you save by not having to replace it? When you go to reassemble it, this right here, and I didn't take any of this out of here. I left this just like this. This right here is going to want to push down, so you got to keep that in the upright position when you go to put it together. Now, this just came out. Now, look at on the bottom of here. There's an arrow right there that shows you that that points down. And we know that on the top of here that this points up. I didn't disassemble this, technically speaking, but I'm going to disassemble it for you. You just pull up on this. There's a ball bearing. Well, there was a ball bearing in there. It might be stuck up underneath a different ring. But underneath here, there's a ball bearing. I'm pretty sure underneath that plastic thing. Now I'm kind of worried that I might have messed this up or that ball bearing fell somewhere where it's not supposed to because I don't remember that being there but maybe that's where it goes I don't know I'm not going to mess with it no more because I really want this tool to actually work luckily for me the ball bearing just dropped back down to where it was supposed to be and to its home so keep an eye out for that if you take this apart so I'm going to put that back together I'm going to make sure that my arrow points downward and that my M18 is up there. I'm gonna drop this back inside here. Also, we wanna make sure there's some grease down inside there. It's greased, obviously. We're gonna drop this in here, and there's a pen right here that this goes on. 
Now I'm starting to worry that I messed with it so much that it's not gonna work anymore, but I already know I fixed it and I didn't need to take it apart this much. Now you're looking for it to be outside here, just like this. And once it's down inside there, you should be able to put your top cover on and good to go. I'm fairly certain that everything's gonna work or at least I hope it is. So now I've got that in there. Now here's the part where you kind of just have to like gingerly make sure that this thing is like cocked up like this and hopefully it rolls down into its position once we start to put the cap back on. Keep in mind when you're putting this back together that the likelihood of an eight year old to a 12 year old assembling this over in Asia is very high. So if they can do it, you can do it too. Want to make sure everything is lined up correctly. I got still got that switch. Give it a little tap there. These really long screws go up in here. So we'll go ahead and insert them right now so it doesn't fall apart. There's a short screw that goes here. There's a short screw that goes here. Short screws go here, here. And I would say this is kind of like a medium screw. It goes right there. And then these long screws go right here. I'm fairly confident that we can tighten all of this stuff down. Use one Milwaukee to fix another Milwaukee. The rule of thumb anytime you're working on anything is never tighten anything down until you have all the screws in. But these screws go this way and then the other screws go this way. So I'm pretty sure I can tighten in these screws first and it not be a problem and then insert them screws later. And I'm not tightening these down because they're I'm assuming they're just going into plastic. They're probably not gnarled. But there is a lot of technology in this little thing. I wouldn't have, I was kind of impressed with how much stuff was actually in here. And just remember when you're doing this stuff, you know, you could send this out and have somebody else fix it, but if they can fix it, more than likely you can fix it too, so. I'm gonna show you all I really needed to do to actually fix this unit, and then we'll show it to you working. I'm going to show you what my problem was, or at least how to insert it and repair it. So all I needed, really needed to do to fix this was take this back part off. And yeah, it doesn't come out real super easy when it's all assembled. When it's disassembled, however, it comes out pretty good. Okay, so we've got this out right here. And this was my problem. My motor wouldn't spin because when I was using this the last time, it got stuck in between a bolt that I was taking out and a piece of framework, and it jammed this up there. So what had happened, and all I really needed to do was take out these four screws and turn this, and it worked just fine. Basically, I just grabbed a pair of channel locks and got the thing to break free. Luckily, I didn't break the housing, it seems. Now what we need to do is we need to reinsert this. Now, don't forget to grease the end of your shaft like I did before I put it in there. I had to take it back apart and grease the end of my shaft. You always need grease on the end of your shaft. Well, you shouldn't if you're good. Keep in mind that this shaft sometimes doesn't want to go down inside there, and it needs to spin as it goes in there. So it's going to spin a little bit. And it doesn't really matter if you have this lined up right now, but... We're going to stick this in there and hopefully can give it a jab and still spin that because we do want it to stay to the correct orientation. Put that back together, put our screws back in, use one Milwaukee to fix another Milwaukee or one dumb tool to fix another dumb tool. And then we'll save like 500 bucks. 300 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever these things cost. I think my phone's running out of storage, but check this out. Yeah, I can't believe it. We got it working and rolling. Well, I guess I was trying to say rocking and rolling, but I'm kind of like Joe Biden up in this bitch. Don't know what the hell I'm saying half the time. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos. Give me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question and it's not baby mama drama related, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. DM me. I answer them for absolutely free. Don't be the next to them. Be the absolute first to you. And if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. 
God bless, folks. Have the greatest of days.